I'm actually going to talk when I'm not next to a busy road and there's not motorbikes trying to run me over. Um, it's about language, yeah. So today, it was quite interesting. I was talking to one of the, the other guys and he said that the first week I did was the hardest week. So there's a four week rotation and you just drop in whenever. But the, the one I did was <laughs> basically the last one. So it was kind of bad timing. Um, I mean, all the other guys that were in that class have moved on to the next class. So it's a good thing. I guess it means I'm not a complete idiot, but also that the other weeks will be easier. So I think that's my main concern is that if this is the first week, how, how hard are they going to get? Um, so today's lesson was on, no, still on numbers, in numbers week. And numbers, generally I'm okay with. Um, we've done a bit in, in Cooksall, we do counting, but I never know what like number eight, I always have to go like what, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight to get there and but most confusingly they have two uh, number systems so there's the korean one and we also have a chinese counting system and depending on what you what you're doing you need to use different ones so if it's your phone number or you want to know the price of something that will be in chinese so like ili um, san sa or and then but if you want quantities like i want five bananas you need to use the koreans which is like hanado set there that's it and so it's one thing to have to know which one you're using. But then the worst one is that when you come to time, you have to use both. So like um, the hours are in, I don't even remember now. I think the hours are in Korean and the minutes are in Chinese. So you have to mix those. It's just like a bit of a mental <laughs> switching as well as reading the symbols. Uh, and the, the numbers as well. So I don't know if anyone's familiar with Asiatic languages, they have another expression for ten thousands it's like ten hundreds thousands ten thousand so for example like two hundred and fifty thousand would be twenty five ten thousand so it's like even for someone who likes maths like me it's just like another more mental gymnastics so that's the worst of it though in terms of the actual language it's okay and it's a, it's a very useful thing to know how to say especially when you're when you're in shops and you can... you were born 그러면 뭐 줄리어스 몇년 전기 뭐 커피숍에서 케이크 네한 조각 원피스 네 주세요. or anything and uh, I don't know what anything is so I just I can read stuff so I just went for Mandaguk and uh, I don't know what it is but we'll see so it just came out and um, my initial thought was it was tripe which is actually one of the few things I won't eat but I think it's dumplings which I definitely do eat so the inside's beef dumplings really nice maybe as you'd expect but it's also very light though it's not really it's not really salty it's not really sweet but in a good way like it's quite very nice for lunch so really enjoying this one quite happy with my choice uh, again i'm eating at a weird time it's like three o'clock uh, but i'm in good company a couple of old korean ladies having a little natter and uh, a couple more korean ladies as well I just bit my tongue because I got too excited and I got kimchi into it. I uh, would not recommend. Just a quick note on yeah, when you don't have English, um, probably the worst thing that would happen is you just point at the menu and hope for the best. Uh, I'm quite lucky in that I will eat most things unless it's awful or something like that. So I guess that's a risky take. Um, so generally you can get by without anything just by body language uh, smiling um, and I think they do I mean I think she appreciated it when I could pronounce the Korean at least even though I had no idea what I was saying but I think even if you don't you smile at them um, point at the menu and as long as you've given the money no one's gonna no one's gonna mind on my way to a Taekyeon class uh, Taekyeon is a Korean martial art um, it's one well, generally, if I say I'm doing a Korean martial art, about 100% of people will say Taekwondo, which is a fair, fair comment to make. But uh, Taekyeon is a precursor to, uh, to Taekwondo. So Taekwondo itself, um, 
did come from Korea, but I think it's there was a guy, General Choi, who, who blended karate, so I think when the Japanese uh, occupied uh, Korea, uh, kind of before the Second World War, um, he was in Japan learning karate, and then when he came back and when all the Korean arts started to flourish again, because the Japanese were kind of suppressing the traditional Korean arts, uh, he melded them together to make um, well, more of, well, for him, he said a more effective martial art. And the one of the story goes, I mean, yeah, the, the world of martial art lineages is very, it's a very murky world, <laughs> depending on who you talk to. Um, but one of the stories is that he, he wanted to make sure that the Japanese would never invade again by having, if Korea had better uh, martial arts than them, like they could take karate and add what's best to Korean, like Tekion, then hopefully it wouldn't happen again. If it hasn't happened again, I'm not sure it's because of the martial arts. Um, so I'm going to go now. I mean, to be honest, I don't know too much about Tekion in terms of the, the specifics, but I'm, I'm really interested to see uh, what principles they've got. And the guy seems really friendly. I think he's, he's got, he's using the Tekion, but he's also melding it with some other more effective techniques as well. So just a good way to, to experience some traditional, some real traditional Korean arts. Um, I think it's just like a UNESCO intangible uh, cultural thing. I'm not sure exactly, but it was recognised officially by UNESCO as being uh, important for Korea's uh, history. finished the Tekion class, so it was really good. Uh, Master Huang, he's a, he was a bit of a charmer. Like the first thing he said to me was like, oh, you're a very handsome man, I like your hair. Uh, so his English was good. Um, I mean, good enough to compliment me. Um, and then he was just very friendly. There was a guy, like not, ma not many of them spoke English, but there was one guy whose English was quite good. He lived in America, so I kind of got paired with him quite a lot. Um, and it's always interesting to see what someone who, someone who knows his stuff, like when they look at you for five seconds, and, what I pick out and for me it said you know, my upper body was quite tense so I just need to relax a bit and just interesting to see the principles that they were they were going into and the thing I picked up from him really was this kind of techion step which was like uh, moving away from backs forwards and how you suddenly drop your weight either on, on either leg uh, to either go transfer your weight forward or to so you can set up for a kick or a, or a sweep um, which is quite a general term, but it was it was good to, for him to explain things quite simply to me. And I made a friend called Dean, <laughs> uh, who's invited me out for some beers, which is quite funny. I think he's quite excited that I spoke English. Uh, he thought I was his age. I mean, everyone here thinks I'm about 21. Um, he's 26, 27. Um, but it's cool. So yeah, as, as with the other class as well, super friendly people, really nice. And it's just, yeah, he wanted me to like come a few times a week because I can't, I can only come like, once or twice at the moment, so I need to sort my, my, my schedule out, but I'll definitely get back there again. talking mood you can get a bit more out of me um this one's on the dance class i had a couple of questions on the dance class and um 
how I get by, you know, do people speak English and that kind of stuff. So yeah, so the, the class yesterday, I didn't just drop into the to Higgs. Uh, so again, I, I messaged them on Instagram before, but that one actually was, I know someone, um, so my friend Izzy from the London Movement Group, um, she came out here and she's not Korean, she's, she's French and uh, she came out without speaking a word of Korean. So I basically checked with her, I was like, do, <laughs> do you think it'll be all right about English? And she said, yeah, it's absolutely fine. But I also messaged the guy, she said, message the guy on Instagram. So I did, the guy Taesung, and he messaged back and said, yeah, absolutely fine. So generally if you get a response from them, it means they speak English and they're happy to do it. Um, I would say you miss probably, like they do explain the basics in English, um, but you'll miss some of the details. So maybe you get, um, 80 percent 75 80 of the detail and you miss like the little bits maybe they're explaining what's going on in your body exactly but you know you're getting the majority of it and it's a good lesson in watching rather than, than listening too much so especially that's what i like about these bodily or like somatic practices and um is that you don't need to speak another language you can you can speak body language and um you can go anywhere in the world really with it so that's what's really great about these things and why I'm quite happy that I train these these kind of arts and do these activities is that you can connect with people no matter what language you speak also it does help like in in the Taekyong class I do speak like functional martial art Korean so I can count and say what a kick is uh, which which helped me and it was good and again it when they saw that I could speak some Korean it was like oh yeah um, so I'm quite happy with that um, I mean, another thing, yeah, just another random musing is more on, uh, which came apparent today when he was talking about uh, moving the weight. It's, uh, I'm sure the dance teacher, in fact, the te dance teacher said the same thing yesterday. It was like, I need to relax the upper body more. So I'm always really interested in the intersection of where dance and martial arts overlap and where the commonalities are. So I'm looking forward to delving deeper into that.